وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة خلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Our praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all things that exist. We praise Him in connection to His perfection. It relates to His name, His attributes, His actions, His rulings and His regulations, His judgments, His decisions. We praise Him in all of the affairs as it relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they go back to the reality of His perfection. And with the believers, there's a statement. Min al-Aqeedah. Al-Aqeedah to al-Islami. اعتقاد المؤمنين from the Islamic belief system it's a statement from the belief held by those who believe in Allah His angels the divine revelation His books they believe in His messengers all of them and they don't reject any one of them who came with Adilatul Ilahiyah. They came with that divine proof of the truthfulness of their prophethood and their messengership. We believe in all of them. We believe that the Prophet وسلم, the Prophet Muhammad is the seal of all of them the finality of the prophethood and the undeniable proof that will exist until Allah takes it away is the Quran, the book of Allah. We ask Allah to guide us by way of his book and to make it easy to submit to him by way of his book and to make us from among those who love the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam by way of his book. What is that statement of belief? La man minka illa ilayk. La man yani ya man la man min Allah min adab Allah. There's no safety 
the security. There's nowhere to hide. That's safe. There's nowhere on the planet Earth. Not in Philadelphia. Not in Saudi. Not in India. Not in Russia. Not in Texas. Not in Mexico. Not in Antarctica. Nowhere on the planet is safe. No one is safe. No one is secure. No one is protected. Not from the people. Not from the creation. But from Allah. The punishment of Allah. The anger of Allah. The anger of Allah that is only permitted by Allah when his servants disobey him. Allah is not angry with his servants when they obey him. Allah is not displeased with his servants when in their efforts to worship him, they make a mistake, but rather he opens up the door of repentance and forgiveness. But those who are obstinate and they persist on the path of disobedience, then the anger of Allah becomes something that is halal upon them. And Allah Azza wa Jal. من جهة عدله وحكمته become something that's permitted for Allah become angry with his servants if they insist and persist in obstinate rebellion against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's no escape you can sin in a city over there and run to the next city. You can sit in the block over there and run to the next block. There's no safety or security from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people not, might not find you. The people might not see you. The people might not know who you are. But Allah knows who you are. Allah knows who you are. Allah knows why you have done what you have done. If in fact you have disobeyed him. La man jamin Allah illa ilayk. There's no refuge or protection from Allah except to him. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. And when we look at the state of the world, yes, the world, no exaggeration. We look at the state of the people. We get our minds off of the local news. And we take a look at the conditions of our brothers and our sisters across the globe. In the Muslim lands and in the non-Muslim lands, it makes no difference. And not just our brothers and sisters. We did to Iman from the angle of Iman. Well, like him, all of our brothers and sisters, from the angle of paternity, we all go back to Adam. All of the human beings are in danger, in a dangerous situation. Even those who are born the truth, danger is right there, lurking, waiting. For one slip, one slip of the heart, so you love something that you shouldn't love, you hate something that you shouldn't hate, you're dissatisfied with something from the decree of Allah, one slip of the heart, one slip of the tongue, you 
you say something about a person that you shouldn't say. You talk secretly to that woman. You shouldn't be talking secretly to that woman. Sister, you talk secretly to that man, and you shouldn't be talking secretly to that man. And hiding on the social media is not sufficient. Words are words. Conversation is conversation. Communication is communication. Because that communication makes its way to the heart and it sickens it. Even if it's a text message, it sickens and weakens the heart. The heart becomes attracted and it's allured to something that is harmful for it. No safety. No security. One slip of the hand, one slip of the eye, one slip into that which is disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dangerous. And our whole affair is premised upon the fact that the shaitan is an enemy. And he has said, Allah has established in his book that he has said he will misguide all of us. The aghwiyannahum ajma'een. I will lead all of them. I will definitely lead all of them astray. I will lead all of them off of the fitrah. I will mislead all of them. I will take all of them off of, of their nature. So they won't worship you. They won't trust you. They won't depend upon you. They won't supplicate to you. They won't love you. They won't remember you. And you created them. That's how far the shaitan will cause the people to slip. Off of the nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us upon. Welcome watch Hekka. And set your face straight, concentratedly, focused upon the religion of Allah, Hanifa, that sincere religion, free of shirk, putting nothing on the level of Allah, no partners, no equals, no comparison. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us upon. And the shaitan, he calls us away, and he distracts us and takes us away from that reality. Fitrat Allah illati fatr al-nasa alayha. That nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human being upon. La tabdeel ali khalqillah. Let there be no change in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't modify. Don't try to amend. The shaitan causes the people to slip so far that the man doesn't even want to be a man anymore. He gets his private parts removed so that he can be a woman in his mind so that he can be trapped in that condition. Slip way down. Allah created him a man. He wants to be a woman. That woman, Allah created a woman, she wants to be a man. That's how far they slip. And we live in a time where that's endorsed. It's called to. And anyone who says it's wrong, they say, be quiet. Don't say anything. Don't judge. Let them slip. Let them fall. Whose call is that? Whose advice is that? It's nothing but the, de the devil's de advice. Nothing but advice from the shaitan. Don't enjoy the good and don't forbid the evil. Be quiet. Let me do what I'm doing. Let me get them to slip further and further and further away from the remembrance of Allah. We're calling Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Kullu abdin yuba'atu ala ma mata alayhi. Every servant is going to be raised up upon what he dies upon. 
Let me let them slip until they die upon that. Don't enjoy the good, don't forbid the evil. Focus on yourself. Ignore everyone else. لا من جاء منك من الله ولا ذلك الجاه. There's no safety from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala upon that side. You have to go to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, enjoying the good and forbidding the evil, following the way of the Sahaba, as Allah honored them and clarified their status to them. And made it clear their mission, made it clear their position, made it clear what they were favored with. What does Allah Subhanahu wa Taala say in His book? Wa kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijatil nas. You are the best community brought out for the people. If we get ourselves together, that's our quality to claim. That's our characteristic to claim. If we are upon the path of the believers. If we get ourselves together, we will be the best people brought out in this time, in this day, in this age, for the people, for the benefit of the people. Ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhauna al munkar wa tu'minuna billah. You enjoy that which is good upon the people, upon yourselves and upon the people, and you forbid from that which is evil, from yourself and from the people, and you believe in Allah. And you hold on to that belief in Allah. And you don't turn away from that belief in Allah. You don't forget your Lord. And you don't forget that you're returning to Him. And you don't forget the reality. لا من جاء من من الله إلا إليك. لا من جاء منك إلا إليك. Run to Allah. Don't run to anyone else. Run to Allah. Don't run to anything else. Submit. As Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in His book, "Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, all you believe. If you want to perfect your iman, you want to fulfill the requirements and the obligations of your iman. You want to stand to be true as it relates to your claim to believe in Allah in the last day. Udu khulu fi silmi kafa." Then enter all the way, enter completely into a sin. What is a sin? A sin. What's the root? The same root, salama, sin lamim, and it indicates that it's a safe place. If you enter into it, you're safe. If you stay outside of it, if you venture outside of it, you're in danger. The Book of Allah is not a joke. Allah chose this word to represent and refer to what? The Mufassirin they say, Imam Sadi wa Ghari, Imam Sadi and other than him, that this asil is Sharai Allah, Sharai Din. It's the rules and regulations, the structure, the system of the religion. That's where you're safe. Enter into that safe haven. You'll be protected. Don't play. Don't walk around the outside of the parameters. Go in. You're safe. Stay out. You're in danger. Go in. You're safe. Stay out. You're in danger. Go in to the religion of Allah completely. Both feet. Wholeheartedly. Submitting your mind, sacrificing your time and your wealth, give it all to stay inside the security of the religion of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the legislation of Allah. So those kufar who don't understand why Allah commands to do this and why He prohibits from doing that, is to keep His servants safe and protected from their enemy. Look at how Allah He ends the ayah. Udu khulu fi silmi kafir. 
ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين and do not follow the footsteps of the shaitan. Where do the footsteps of the shaitan take any one of us? I will definitely misguide all of them, take all of them off the straight path. And then what does he say in his proclamation? The shaitan, as Allah establishes in his book, he said, Illa ibadaka minhumul mukhlasi. It has a very reading, they say mukhlasi. He mislead all of us except those who Allah blesses with sincerity. To be pure in their iman, free from shirk, free from loving anything more than they love Allah, free from being afraid of anything and concerned with anything more than they're afraid or concerned with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Free from that. Because indeed, whenever we love something more than Allah, that's the defect of the human being. That's the harm of the human condition. Whenever we're, fear, we're afraid of something more than we're afraid of Allah, that's our human defect. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he say? لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَكْوِينَ ثُمَّ رَدَّدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ And indeed we created the human being in the best of modes, in the best of estimation, the best of potential. Allah created us like that. The ability to achieve high things, but that height of achievement can only be attained upon iman. Not putting anything before Allah. Not raising anything or giving anything a status above Allah. Not associating any partners with Allah. If we fail to do that, then we will fall, as Allah said, Then we reduced him, we dropped him, we lowered him, we rejected him, until we fell to the lowest of the low. Except those who believe. And they perform righteous actions. Those are the ones who rise up. Those are the ones who don't fall to the bottom. Those are the ones who are successful. Those are the ones who are beloved to Allah. Those are the ones who are near to Allah. Those are the ones who get the help of Allah. No security. No secure, except to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On ta'ati, on obedience to Him, keeping ourselves confined happily and pleased within the parameters of His legislation, His pure legis legislation. May Allah make it easy for us. Bismillah. Assalamu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa la alihi wa ahli wa ashabihi. Wa ma tabi'ahum bi ihsan. Ila yawm al-deen, ila yawm al-deen wa sallam. Look at this statement of Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi. Ibn Taymiyyah, he talks about the need that we have for the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The need that we have for the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Al insan mutarrun ila shar. That the human being, he is in need. Dependent upon the legislation. He's in need and dependent upon the revelation, the, the, the legislation. فَإِنَّهُ بَيْنَ حَرَكَتَيْنِ Because indeed, his reality, he's between two actions, 
two postures, two movements. Harakatun yujlabu biha ma yanfa'u. The action that it brings forth that which benefits him. وَحَرَكَةٌ يُدْفَعُ بِهَا مَا يَضُرُّهُ In the movement, in the actions that they protect him or bring or lead him to عفوان they lead him يُدْفَعُ they lead him to and they bring about that which is harmful to him. So our affair, no matter what our hearts, how our hearts are moving, it's one or the other. It's either moving in a way as it relates to our beliefs that's beneficial for us. Or it's moving in a way as it relates to our beliefs that's harmful to us. The same with our tongue. The same with every action that we put forth, no matter where it's coming from. It's either for our benefit or to our detriment. It's going to bring about that which is beneficial or it's going to facilitate that which is harmful. Shaykh al-Islam, rahmatullahi alayhi. He said, this is the reality of the human being. He's between these two movements all the time. What shar? Who are no? In the legislation, it is the light. It's the light. It's the light that makes it clear, that clarifies that which is beneficial for him and that which is harmful for him. The legislation is the light that makes it clear and it clarifies that which is beneficial for him and that which is harmful for him. What's shar? The legislation. Nurullah fi ardi. It's the light of Allah on his earth. The legislation of Allah is the light of Allah upon his earth. وَعَدْلُهُ بَيْنَ عِبَادِهِ And it's his justice. It's that by way of which his justice is established between the servants. There's no way for us we're going to be oppressive to one another if we don't act towards and act with one another according to the legislation of Allah. We're going to be unjust to one another. We're going to be oppressive to one another. We're not going to be able to be fair and just in our dealings with one another without the legislation of Allah. We need the legislation of Allah so that we don't harm one another. We need the legislation of Allah so that we don't harm one another. وَحُسْنُهُ and it's his fortress. It's his fortress. That which the one who enters it, man dakhalahu kana amina. He's safe. The one who enters his legislation, the one who enters his fortress, he's safe. Walaysa murad bishara'i tamyiz bayna dari. He said, and we don't mean, and the meaning is not, as it relates to the legislation of Allah, the meaning is not that we distinguish that we distinguish between that which is harmful and that which is beneficial based upon our sensory perception, based upon our perception, what we feel, what we experience in the world. It's not based upon that. That's not what the legislation is based upon, or the, our assessment of what's harmful and what's benefit. That's not how we determine it, based upon what we experience, what we feel. That's not what is meant. He said, فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ يَحْصُلُ لِلْحَيَوَانَاتِ الْعَجَمِ Because indeed, that's something that is attained by the wild animals. The wild animals can distinguish between what is beneficial and what is harmful to them based upon their experience and their touching and their hearing and all of those sensory perceptions. 
Wild animals can do that. They can achieve that. فَإِنَّ الْحِمَارِ وَالْجَمَلِ يُمَيِّزُ بَيْنَ الْشَعِيرِ وَالْتَرَامِ And the donkey and the camel, they can distinguish between a grain of barley and the dirt. They can distinguish between a grain of barley and dirt. So they'll eat the barley, but they won't eat the dirt. While the barley is on top of the dirt, they'll pick up the barley and they'll leave the dirt alone. A, a donkey and a camel can discern based upon their senses. That's not what is meant by the legislation of Allah in determining and distinguishing between what is harmful and what is beneficial. He said, Bel, etamiz, bain al afal, al lati tazurru fa'iluha fi ma'ashihi wa ma'adi. But rather, we mean to be able to distinguish between the actions, what we do, which are harmful to the one who does it, as it relates to his life and as it relates to his hereafter. كَنَفْ الْإِيمَانِ وَالتَّوْحِيدِ وَالْعَدَلِ Like we are able to discern and understand the benefit of Iman and Tawheed and justice, faith and Tawheed and justice. وَمَا كَانَ ضِدُّ ذَلِكَ And that which is the opposite of that. And what's the opposite of Iman and Tawheed and justice? The opposite of Iman is kufr, disbelief. The opposite of Tawheed is shirk. The opposite of Adal is dhul. فَكُلُّ مَا أَمَنَ اللَّهُ بِهِ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَنَا So everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded for us, then it's the best thing for us. وَهُوَ يُوَجِّهُنَا إِلَى النَّجَاءَ وَالْفَلَاحِ In those commands of Allah, the legislation of Allah, it directs us to that which is safety and security and success. That's the legislation of Allah. That's why we need the legislation of Allah. That's why we have to stay within the parameters of the legislation of Allah and submit to it and be pleased with it and use it. وَكُلُّ مَا نَهَى اللَّهُ عَنْهُ فَهُوَ شَرٌ لَنَا وَهُوَ يُجَرُّنَا إِلَى مَهَالِكِ يُجَرُّنَا إِلَى مَهَالِكِ وَالْخُسْرَانِ And everything that Allah has forbidden us from, then indeed it is that which is evil for us, is bad for us. If we indulge in it, if we engage in it, it's bad for us. And it pulls us. And it pulls us to that which is, to everything that is destruct, uh, destructive or, destru or destroyed or harmful. And it pulls us to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, in the la fi khusr. So everything that Allah has forbidden is going to pull us to that state of loss and deprivation. This is why we need the legislation of Allah. And this is why we have to stay inside the parameters of Allah. And this is why we have to seek the help of Allah in doing so. And it's not something that we can obtain, something that we can attain, something that we can achieve, illa bi tawfiqi rabbina. Except by the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah giving us the ability to do it. So know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, ista'inu. Oh, you believe, seek help, the help of Allah, with patience and prayer. And indeed, Allah is with those who are patient. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Subhanaka Allah wa bihamdika. Wa shayrun la ilaha inta istaghfir. Wa atubu ilayka. Wa namu salli ala sayyidina Muhammad. Habibun salat. So who's the